Hey everybody, it is summer here in Myrtle Beach, which means it is hot and humid, so I'm gonna try and make this video as quick as possible. So, recently I added a supercharger to my Beams 3SGE in my AE86. I'm still sorting out the tune on it, but one of the supporting mods I installed was a OS Geiken Super Single Clutch. When you swap in a Beams 3SGE in anything, one of the first things you need to do is put a different clutch in it. And the reason for this is usually it's pretty toasted. When you get these engines out of a Japanese junkyard or whatever, they're usually pretty bad. And the flywheel on it isn't machinable because it's a dual mass flywheel. So you buy a lightweight uh, flywheel with a clutch and that way you get a little bit of an upgrade. But because I added a supercharger, I needed something that could hold a little bit more power on the stock one. From what I was finding out was that the, like a stock replacement clutch from like Exedi uh, ends up just not having the clamping force to be able to hold the extra power of the supercharger. The same thing with like the typical ORC clutch that a lot of people use, uh, which is a fantastic clutch. Um, it's another super single style clutch, but it just doesn't have the same kind of clamping force. So I upgraded to an OS Geiken Super Single. Now, one of the first things you'll notice if you install a Super Single Clutch from any brand is that if it's not one of the specific silent type, uh, as like it's actually labeled that when you buy it, like silent, super single or whatever, um, you know, you'll have this really interesting jingly jangly kind of noise when you have the clutch pedal pushed in. The reason why a super single clutch jingles is because of the way it's assembled. It's a little different than the typical clutch where you have, you know, your flywheel, you've got your clutch disc, and then you have your pressure plate, uh, finger spring plate, all as one unit. The way that a super single clutch works is you've got a flywheel, you've got your clutch disc, and the flywheel has like uh, little teeth that stick out, and then the pressure plate actually slots into those, so that way it can't rotate. Um, and then the finger plate itself bolts onto those little you know, teeth or fingers that poke out from the flywheel. And so instead of having that actual, the pressure plate a part of the finger plate, they're separate. This makes it really easy to service them. And it also makes it a lot easier to have parts interchange between different vehicles and different clutch kits. So that's how it works. And so when you press in, when you push in the pedal, it gets jingly because that the, the pressure plate is jingling around a little bit and the clutch is jingling around a little bit. So you get a little bit of noise. The silent type actually puts a little spring in there, like a little wave spring around there that applies just a little bit of pressure when you release it, so that way it doesn't jingle around. Okay, so now to the review of this clutch. Uh, super straightforward, probably, you know, install was really easy. One of the things to note is that if you're installing this kit, whether it's from ORC or from OS Geiken or from Cusco or for whoever, for a Beams, the flywheel bolts are not the stock ones. And most of the kits don't come with replacements. You actually need to buy flywheel bolts for an RB. So like Nissan RB20, 25, 26, whatever, I had to get Nissan flywheel bolts to bolt my flywheel onto the crank because they're just, it's a different size. So once I did that, got it in the car, I drove around, I tested out a few drift events. I didn't break it in whatsoever except for driving around the oval at the Myrtle Beach Speedway a few times. No other break-ins and honestly, I love the clutch. I was worried it would be like a really heavy pedal. So I was considering even going to a um, like a twin disc clutch because that those tend to have a little bit lighter pedal because they've got higher clamping force. It doesn't rely as much on springs, but as, as it relies on the two clutches. So uh, the clutch pedal on this with the super single is probably what I would equate pretty similar to like a, a newer like WRX. Like I used to have a 2008 WRX and the pedal feel on that was pretty much the same as the super single. So it's not super aggressive as far as pedal. You're not gonna feel like your leg is getting this crazy workout. It is stiffer than stock uh, by maybe, I don't know, maybe 20 or 30% is what I'd say the pedal feel is stiffer. As far as the aggressiveness of the clutch, it is not like aggressive at whatsoever. The clutch disc itself is sprung, so that way it's not really aggressive and grabby. It feels, honestly, like I guess it really does feel like like a WRX clutch to me, a Subaru WRX clutch. That the uh, the grab it has and the pressure of the pedal. That's that's really what I equate it to. So it's really not bad, honestly. It's probably easier to push than the old. Uh, I used to have an ACT six puck clutch um, with heavy duty uh, pressure plate in my 4AG. What was in this before? And that's pretty much like that was harder to push and more aggressive than this. Even though the super single is kind of a six puck style disc, it's not 
overly aggressive. It's still a very, very streetable clutch, and I'm not worried whatsoever about you know shock loading my transmission and blowing it up because I was worried about that. It is the J160. There are rumors that it is weak, but honestly, I think it's it's really such a great fit. Even if you're not you know uh, supercharging or turbocharging your your beams. Honestly, I wouldn't hesitate to go to the OS Gaiken if you want to spend a few more bucks over the ORC. I honestly am super happy with it. It's a little bit more aggressive, so that way you can upgrade more power later and be okay with it. I think it's worth the money. If anybody has any questions, let me know. Put them in the comments. Like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Thanks, guys.